Shortly before 7.30 a.m., a caller contacted the CMPD 911 call center and advised that a suspect had tried to steal his car as well as had tried to kill him. Let's hear that call for service. Charlotte 911, do you need police fire or money? I'm sorry, on my apartment was a guy with uh, a pistol trying to steal my car and he was pointing at me. He was trying to kill me. All right, and when did this happen? Right now. So he tried to rob your vehicle? Yes. And he and had a he gun? Yeah, he, he was pointing to me. What did he look like? Was he white, black, or Hispanic? He's black. He has a, a, a black boot pack, and he has a black pen and and black um um. Okay, and he had a pistol. Um, sweater. Yeah, he had a pistol. He okay. he is still right here in the apartment. Okay, so he pointed the gun at you. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so when you confronted him, he pointed the gun at you. Yes. Yes. He put the gun in my head. All right, and he's still in the parking lot? Yes, he's in front of the office. With the information provided by that 911 caller, officers responded to Wingdown Court. <laughs> I'm shot and start medic for We will now hear from Sergeant Steve Winterhalter, a 25-year veteran of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Sergeant Winterhalter spent 13 years on the SWAT team as both an operator and a supervisor. He's currently assigned as the range master to the firearms training division. So it's important to discuss what does Officer Whitley know at this point. He's responding to a call for service with an armed individual who was involved in a larceny from auto and then brandished a weapon toward a civilian in the community. Independence is running on possible robbery suspect. We see here Officer Whitley arriving on scene and he immediately encounters the individual that's running on foot. Subject falls down right there, has an opportunity to um, surrender and comply, but continues to flee on foot while Officer Whitley's giving loud verbal commands to stop and get on the ground. What we see here as he reaches the hill, the individual turns around and with his left arm turns towards Officer Whitley and fires upon Officer Whitley, striking him in the shoulder area down and into his body. Officer Whitley immediately is able to return fire with his service weapon and falls to the ground. So after Officer Whitley fired those first couple of rounds, the, the gun jammed up. He had to resort back to his training, do an immediate action drill, which essentially is just him getting the weapon back up and running, unjamming it so that he can continue to get, engage if need be. He assesses that the suspect is still a threat not only to himself but the other officers on scene and the community members inside the complex. So this overhead of the map is just showing the flight path of the suspect being the red arrow. You've got a red box where that's the actual location where the exchange of gunfire took place and then a blue arrow indicating where the assisting CMPD officer was coming from. His backdrop being the wood line behind the suspect. Officer Whitley engages the suspect as he continues to flee, being mindful that the suspect is still armed and has not dropped the weapon nor complied um, to get on the ground. Officer Whitley perceived that the suspect was still a threat to himself, the responding officers, the earlier victim in this case, 
and any other members of the public. At this point in the video, Officer Whitley has been shot by the suspect and the suspect has also been apprehended. At this point, we are seeing the view from Officer Whitley's body-worn camera that is laying on the ground as Officer Whitley has taken his uniform shirt off in preparation to be treated by medic once they arrive. Calm down, man. I'm You're good. good. We're good. I'm sprinting. That's okay. Look at it. Is it through and through? Wait, wait. Who's got the suspect? He's down there. That's what Jimmy is? I think you best one. Suspect's down there. All right. Y'all good? Everybody good over there? What you need, Jim? 1300. It's going to be a uh, gunshot to the upper left shoulder. Officer has been shot. Looks like it's just in. Right. I'm good, man. You got a golf? Yeah. Good night, motherfucker. You know who that is? Yeah. At this point, we will stop watching the body worn camera footage as Officer Whitley is receiving medical attention. Despite what was heard earlier in the video about this being a graze wound, it was found that the bullet actually penetrated deeply into Officer Whitley's shoulder. Treating physicians determined that removing the bullet would cause more damage to Officer Whitley's shoulder. So that bullet remains lodged in his shoulder to this day. Despite that, Officer Whitley is expected to make a full recovery. As for the suspect, following his apprehension, he was identified and it was determined that this 14-year-old had a lengthy juvenile criminal arrest history. A portion of what he has been charged with in the past is now shown. The suspect remains in custody for the events that transpired in this incident. Officer Whitley was aware that as the suspect continued to flee with a firearm, that officers who were moving into position to intercept the suspect would likely be faced with an armed suspect who had just shot him. Knowing that that suspect would pose that imminent deadly threat to those officers, Officer Whitley used deadly force against the suspect. Furthermore, Officer Whitley was justified in his actions in accordance with the North Carolina General Statute that states that an officer can use deadly force against a suspect who is escaping by means of a deadly weapon. It's clear in this case that the suspect was using a deadly weapon, a firearm, to shoot Officer Whitley as a means of escape.